typically, if you are doing an ICO in Hong Kong, you need a license to do it. It's under SFC. Um, it's a regular activity. Um, they treat this as in, like fundraising. It's treated as you are selling securities. So you need a license to do it, right? So yes, if you're prepared to get a license, yes, you can do it in Hong Kong. That's fine. I mean, they are licensed given by the um, Hong Kong authority. I mean, they have at least two. I know they have license to do it. Uh, it's exchange and also supporting ICO. Um, but other than that, uh, if you're not launching or issuing tokens, um, are not preparing to get a license, there are other jurisdictions that you can do it. Um, I think that two jurisdictions which is pretty common, which we handle a lot in the last couple of years. I would say BVI and, uh, and Cayman Islands. Um, they are crypto friendly. They really uh, want to take a you know big market share for you know companies want to do crypto. I mean, they allowed um, companies to issue tokens. Um, but, but again, uh, I think it's not a matter of uh, just issuing tokens. It's where you want to launch a product and, and the tokens. And, uh, and then you need to think about whether you are uh, apply the local law. So that means even despite the fact that you set up a, a, a Cayman company and then issue tokens, but if you're doing uh, selling the tokens in Hong Kong, then you're under the Hong Kong jurisdiction. Right, so you still have a bit of consideration there. Um, but I would say issuing tokens, since it's going to be that, uh, if you do it offshore, like BBI and Cayman, you have more flexibility. Right? Now, but that, that one thing, but then you need to think about um, other considerations, as in like where, where you hire people, right? where you get the talents. Uh, yes, Hong Kong is continues to be a, a, a big place with a lot of talents, a lot of interests. Um, so what I see is uh, typical people who have like a deal structure, right? You will have like the Cayman companies um, to do more of the crypto side of things. And then you have an operating company that's in Hong Kong or even Singapore um, to be the operating company, hiring people, keep the business running. Uh, so that that is important. Um, and also, um, so this is going back to Early on, uh, we talked about this audit and taxations or reporting requirements. Uh, definitely, if you have a Hong Kong company, you can hold crypto. It's, it's, so you just report it, it's illegal, uh, but then you need to do it all the taxation, the filing, that is a bit of complicated and that costs you a little bit more, maybe. Uh, but if you're purely holding, a, uh, holding crypto, if you don't want to hold it individually, um, you can use a Cayman, you can EBI to hold it. There's no reporting requirement that you need to do. So that means in terms of what asset, underlying asset hold under a BBI and Cayman. So that means you can skip um, the, the reporting side of it and all the auditing part of it, uh, purely using a Cayman and BBI as a holding company of the crypto. Similar concept that people using the offshore company to hold other assets, uh, like property or other things. Um, I think that, that gives a bit of flexibility. If you consider there are offshore jurisdiction, which is legit, that really allows you to do the, the crypto uh, business.